Hi, fiber friends. This is Carol from Carol Makes, and we are on the third week of Fiber Friday. This week for Fiber Friday, we're going to be prepping fleece for the Tour de Fleece. Now, we need to talk about the Tour de Fleece because not everybody knows what that is. Um, and this is my first year um, participating in the Tour de Fleece, so let me just tell you a little bit about it. The Tour de France runs for 21 days, um, the bicycling race. The Tour de Fleece also runs for those same 21 days in July. This year it's going from July 1st through the 22nd. And basically the goal is just when they spin, we spin. They're spinning their bicycle wheels. We're spinning our spinning wheels. This is the 15th year for the whole fiber community to do this online event. Now, if you want to participate in the Tour de Fleece, almost said it wrong, if you wanna participate in that, my suggestion is to go on Ravelry and find a group. That's if you want to like be in a group and you wanna to commit to an hour and like you want to compete. That's really on the Ravelry side. If you are just all about like, hey, I've got my own personal goals and I just want to be accountable and I want to see what other people are doing. That's completely me. Um, check Facebook groups. There is uh, a group for just Tour de Fleece 2022 on Facebook. I'm in it and that's really as far as I'm going. Um, the three goals of the Tour de Fleece are to challenge yourself, to spin and have fun. So everybody's um, goals or dedication might look different. You know, you might be a new spinner and you may be saying, you know what? I can only spin for like 15 minutes a day. Totally fine. Um, you might be retired and enjoying retirement and say, you know what? I want to spend an hour every day. Fantastic. Whatever you want to do. If you want to do the um, spindles, hand spindles, if you want to do the traditional wheels, if you want to do the electric, um, I'm probably going to do a little bit of all of them. Um, personally, my goals are about endurance. I'm just saying that as someone who has like over eight giant trash bags full of fleeces. Some of them are washed, some of them are not. Um, I need to work through those. I need to get that out. I need to get them out of the bag and I need to get them made into some yarn. So my goal for those 21 days is going to be endurance. Can I sit down, uh, especially the days where I'm here in Nashville in my studio, can I sit down and do like multiple hours of getting this spun. My other goal is consistency. So I wanna make sure that I'm not over spinning or under spinning really. Um, and that as I'm pulling it off of the bobbin, there's just a nice even texture. There's no slubs. It's not thick and thin. Like I really want a nice consistency to my yarn. But all of that comes with practice. So these 21 days are a fantastic time to do practice, to do practice. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you wanna be on a team and like compete, go to Ravelry. If you don't and you're just all about like personal self-fulfillment and self goals, get on Facebook and find the Tour de Fleece group. Um, Right now, there's over 10,000 spinners who are committed to spinning in July. And that is awesome. That is worldwide too. Um, you don't have to watch bicycling when you're spinning. Um, <clears throat> some people will. I will probably spin and watch it a little bit, um, but only because I have a, a personal connection. My grandfather loved the Tour de France, like lived for it. Would, you know, when July would come, that's the only time that the news was turned off. Like he wanted to watch 
the Tour de France. And he had his bicycling magazine, like he was a bicycler. Um, yeah, so I, I will probably watch it just because we lost him two and a half years ago. And this will be a nice time to like have it on the TV, kind of in that background noise kind of, you know, energy, um, spinning and, and thinking of him. So I'll probably watch part of it, but let's not lie. Let's not kid ourselves. The Office, Schitt's Creek, Seinfeld, RuPaul's Drag Race, those are all gonna be watched. Those all get binge watched when I'm spinning or weaving, anything like that. Um, okay, so that's all about Tour de Fleece. And if you are participating in it, comment down below and tell me what your goal is. So today we're doing some prep work, prepping for July 1st. Um, at Hoosier Hills, in, at the beginning of June, I, I bought a lot of fleeces, um, probably more than I should have, but they were like ridiculous prices. It was a lot of farmers who just needed to get it out. Like I remember there was this huge bag and it had $20 on it. And I was like, are, are you sure? Am I, was this, was this misplaced? No, we just need to get rid of it. Oh, okay, I'll give it a good home. Um, so I have this big, oh no, I have this big bag and it was already washed. Um, it's, it's beautiful and it's so soft. Um, you can see all of the curls in it. Um, it is from Sand Creek Shetlands. Um, and it's, it's just, it's gorgeous. She has already gone ahead and washed it. Um, so we're gonna do the carding today. I'm gonna teach you how to do carding, why carding matters, um, and then even like show you a little bit of spinning just to see how it, um, how it spins up. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so you saw my big bag. Um, I have two shallow baskets out right now. So this is the fiber straight from the bag that I bought it from. Um, it's got, it still has some little, you know, things of grass. It, it's still, it's got some VN still in it. Now over here is the fleece after it's been carded. So this is the before. This is the after. This is what we're getting to today. And the tools that we're going to use, um, I have two hand carters. So we're gonna be using that. Um, and we're also like, you need a little like trash can maybe, just even like a little bit, cause you're gonna be pulling out little sticks um, grass, things like that. And there's even parts of the fleece that aren't going to be good for spinning. So you're either going to be throwing it on the floor, which I do, or, you know, putting it in some sort of like little container. So those are the things that you need. So I'm going to take one of my hand carters and I'm just going to put it right here on my leg. Please be careful with it though. I mean, the teeth are kind of sharp. Um, I accidentally did um, hit it on the side of my leg and I have a, a giant scar. So don't be like me, please be careful. Mind what you're doing. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm just gonna pick some out from our container in front of me. This is the container that has straight from the bag that I bought it in. So if you look, there are some crimps in it. There's some, you know, little pieces of, you know, the farm <laughs> on it. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do first is just try to open up the fibers with my hands. I'm just getting it ready for the carters. And if I can, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out those pieces of VM, vegetable matter. You know, it's the grass, it's the sticks, it's the twigs, it's all the things that 
come into contact with the sheep or the whatever animal that you are carting. All right. I leave some, that's just personal preference. I leave some because I think it kind of has character. Like when you're spinning or you're weaving with it or knitting, whatever, you're, you're remembering, oh yeah, this actually came from a sheep. Um, maybe you know the sheep it came from. Um, yeah, I just, I kind of like it, but I don't want too much. So I do get out a lot of it. Okay. So now that we have opened up a lot of these fibers, we're gonna go ahead, take your carter, kind of gently holding this. This is called charging it. You're going across and you're letting the wool Kind of be accepted by all the teeth that are on here. <clears throat> Try to get your wool from here down. Don't get in this top lane. If you get in that top lane, it's just going to sit there. It's going to be really hard to um, continue to go back and forth and comb it out. So leave the top alone. All right. I have my other carter and again I'm on my leg and it's got a nice crunching sound <laughs> you're kind of combing it like you would your child's hair if there was a tangle and she wasn't screaming at you um, and every once in a while, I look back and see what kind of things can I pick out of it. So I got one side that looks like this. Still have a lot on this side. So yeah, just going back and forth. Um, depending on how full you make it how 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 much you put on the carter um and how how tangled it is um that's going to make a difference in how hard you have to pull so if it's too much take some out or if it's um let's say you found a lock that has a tangle in it just hand like hold it with your hand and try to brush just that part out by itself. You can do it. Sometimes it's way easier that way. All right, I'm gonna go back and forth. That is some nice, long staple length wool. And then I'm just gently pulling this off of the carters. When I'm happy with how it looks. Right now I'm just kind of balling it up into like a little white cloud and putting it in my basket ready to be spun. Now, you might be saying, this is a lot of work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> true so at some point you kind of have to be a process lover um, yes you know that the end product is more yarn and it's yarn that you made but you got to kind of fall in love with the process at the same time which if you're spinning you've got to be a process spinner at some point deep down in your heart because you could go off and just buy whatever yarn but it you're making it so you're enjoying the process um, so yes, it does take it does take some time and some patience, um, especially if you want to do like a, a larger um, 
larger amount for a larger uh, project you have in mind. Um, but this is a really important step. Why is it an important step, Carol? Um, it's so that all of your wool is untangled. And it's all clean from all of those things that you don't want in your wool. Now, that means when it's time for you to spin, it is easy going. Your wool is cleaned. It is all untangled. Ooh, now look, I pulled this off of here. That's not ready to go in the done pile. There are little locks that still need to be separated. Put that back on our carter and we'll just work it out. Ooh, there it goes. Sometimes it just needs some extra love. All right, I'm gonna card some more and then I we'll show you how this gets spun up. All right, so now we're gonna spin a little bit of the wool that we just carded, just so we can see how it looks. You know, that way I can tell, oh, there's more tangles in it than I thought. Or, ooh, this is really, really smooth. I like how this is going. I'm gonna keep going with my, my carding, how I'm doing it. So right now, today, I'm using my um, electric eel wheel, um, which I just got and absolutely adore. I was late to that uh, crowd. I kind of resisted the electric uh, wheel, but I'm here for it. So right now, I'm picking out maybe two, maybe three little clouds that I made that are ready to go. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, just standing. Just standing. If I can help you with anything, let me know, please.
I can't quite read the price on this pen. I realized by doing this test run, and this is part of why you do test runs, um, that I am getting better results if I kind of spin from the fold. So I will remember that when I go to spin in July. But right now I'm just gonna let it take all the way up, turn my wheel off, Got some nice yarn on the bobbin. It's very soft. Who knows if I'll dye it when it's all done. But for right now, we're, we'll just go back to carding. Lots more work has to be done. Lots more needs to be carded and processed and ready to go. But thanks for going with me on this journey and I hope that you're prepping for the Tour de Fleece. Thanks for watching.